So I want to briefly kind of touch on a few cases and then kind of bring us up to uh, wrap us up here. But this is actually an interesting triline patient we had of ours, really no other options, high risk here for tricuspid procedure. Uh, so the way this works is, again, a posterior plication. Uh, we're heavily dependent on Manny, who's our echocardiographer in these cases. Uh, I can't tell you how critical the role of the interventionals and echocardiographer interaction is for these things. Uh, in this case, we're going to go to a posterior septal commissure. We'll place a wire there, and then we'll deliver a pledget. This is all suture-based. We then will move over to our second wire position uh, and do we'll go, go along the posterior commissure, uh, posterior annulus, uh, and then perform a second wire crossing as you can appreciate that there. And the nice thing, again, about a lot of these technologies is their flexibility. So when we look at this first, then we've done one pair. We've now plicated, so we've taken two sutures in two different locations, pulled them together, and locked them. And then we look at what the results show, and we say, okay, the TR is somewhat better. Probably not why I want to walk out of a room, though. We have the flexibility of, let's just throw another pair in. There's no real risk of having a gradient afterwards that we have with mitre clip by doing more and those kind of things. So now we move to the second uh, 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 episode here. So now same idea, wire crossing. We're moving, shifting along that posterior annulus a little bit more. Same idea, crossing with the wire. And now you can watch how we plicate here on fluoro. We're bringing that last pair in and again, that's going to shrink that annulus posterior plication and have a long-term impact, hopefully, on that TR. So what we recognize here, you can see the final, um, sorry, it's a little slow here. You can see all these lined up. The right coronary, which is important because it runs along the tricuspid annulus, is just fine. And we appreciate that there was a 75% reduction in TR, a nice reduction in the four-chamber diameter as well as the tricuspid annular on biplane. And again, you can see here the... Uh, interoperative start, first plication, and final result on TR with, you know, not perfect reduction, not an elimination of TR, but a substantial reduction in TR at the end of these cases. The last example I want to show you is, is what we've become more familiar with, unfortunately, was these end-stage cases. So because of the idea and notion of just treating people with medical therapy over time, we've seen more and more where people finally get to the point of desperation. They start Googling stuff, find our name somewhere, send us patients from whoever far away, and, you know, honestly, they're at the last stages of any opportunity to fix them or not. So this is a lady who was on 3-plus uh, edema, on 100 torsamide BID. She had nine heart failure hospitals in the last year, and just prior to the hospital, this procedure, we diary 60 pounds off her just to get her to the procedure. And I still remember in a room, I told her I didn't think we could clip her. Uh, we're going to do an off-label clip. We thought that this was honestly a total Hail Mary if we ever tried. Said we weren't going to do it because there wasn't a chance. She's crying. I said, you know, we can, we can try. We can give it a chance potentially. And you can appreciate our issue here. If we're going to clip something, we have to have coaptation of the leaflets. And uh, there was absolute lack of coaptation in any of the areas, including the commissures. And because of that, we, we really felt that it was unlikely we were going to be able to have a successful tricuspid clip of this procedure, of this patient. You can appreciate This is after 60 pounds coming off. This is still the amount of residual TR this patient has. Again, you can appreciate the residual TR. So one thing that we do often is we uh, have learned, we've done uh, about 24 of these cases now, and myself, Chuck, and Vivek, is that we have to get creative to try to be successful in these cases. And so uh, this is an example of, of really what we call Piedmont's three Ps, which involves PEEP, pacing, and sternal pressure. And this is not where I want the technology to be five years from now, but this is where it is a reality right now. So essentially, we have to, we pace, we'll put pressure on the chest, and peep, and as you watch the annulus, I, interestingly, the RV is sitting right there behind the sternum. So by pressing on the sternum, we're actually seeing the annulus come inward, and it really assists you greatly in actually being able to come up and effectively grasp those leaflets. And so you can appreciate in this picture here, we're able to actually effectively grasp the leaflets, all because of actually using that technique there. Without that, we were not able to get any, uh, any clips on. And really getting one clip on really greatly facilitates you getting multiple clips on. So essentially at this case, um, we're able to move forward and we actually put four clips uh, along the tricuspid valve. And you know, you may look at this picture and say, ah, you know, there's still TR there. But if you look at the pre and post results in these patients, which I think is critical to understand how they're going to respond over time, um, you can see see if this will play here, uh, a drastic improvement. We really went from a 7 plus, which is based on my, my co-PI Becky Hahn's new classification of torrential TR, to this moderately severely TR. 
But the interesting follow-up in this patient is quite remarkable. So again, she had had nine heart failure hospitalizations in the last year. And honestly, the first month afterwards, she was rehospitalized because we were struggling with her new diuretic dose because her heart was so surprised what was happening. But ironically, I gave this talk a few weeks ago somewhere, and the morning I was getting on the plane, her referring had called me about another patient and said, I just have to tell you, I saw her in clinic, and she's a new woman. She hasn't been hospitalized in six months. This has completely changed her life. And that, to me, is really the epitome of this whole TR story is we don't have perfect solutions right now. We don't have everything figured out, but it is really impactful on people's lives that really are desperate. And getting to provide those type of services and therapies to these patients has been incredibly rewarding. So... In my idea, there's too little done in the TR space right now. There's still a lack of optimization for TR patients in general from a medical therapy standpoint that can be mildly effective but uh, often isn't done right. And surgical therapy really, I think, is too risky unless you really have to in a lot of these patients. And this is a real great opportunity for catheter therapies. It can have a significant improvement in quality of life, though we have large needs to continue to adapt to these technologies over time as well as to improve, continue to improve our use of them and our interaction with our echocardiographers to optimize the results we get for these patients. And that's what I've got. <laughs>